Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's wonderful uh, to be here this morning. I want to say a big thank you to Mr. Ison for allowing me to come here and, and uh, say a few words to you. This is my sixth trip to the United States of America and uh, my second visit to this great state of South Carolina. I love coming here. I think South Carolina is a wonderful place. Um, the people are fantastic. It's got a lot of natural beauty and um, it truly is an exceptional place within an exceptional nation. And whenever I come here, I really do see those most exceptional elements in their finest exhibition uh, in this state. And that is a credit, of course, uh, to each and every single one of you. I, at the moment, am on a speaking tour um, all through the United States, visiting four or five different states, one of which is South Carolina. Later today, I will be visiting the uh, Citadel and delivering a, a keynote address there and I'm most looking forward to visiting those young men and women um, who truly do represent America in her best form and uh, I'm looking forward to going there and speaking with, with them and, uh, and thanking them for maintaining uh, the greatness of America through everything that, that they do. I have always been drawn to America because for me America is more than just a country with borders, more than just a territory. For me America is an idea, a notion, an ideal. It transcends borders. For me America means freedom and freedom is the most noble pursuit of mankind and there has never been a nation anywhere in the world in almost 5,000 years of recorded human history that has done more to promote human and individual liberty. <clears throat> this nation, ladies and gentlemen, is the most optimistic, patriotic, religious, individualistic and libertarian nation in the world. And it has created unprecedented prosperity, success, it has spread peace and liberty across the world in a way that no one could possibly imagine and no one can say a big enough thank you for that. I got sick and tired of hearing the same people all across the world, the elites of our world, talk about how bad and evil and awful and terrible America is. They truly have hijacked the international agenda and no doubt there are those type of elites also in your country. And they've captured a great many classrooms, they've captured a great many colleges and they've captured a lot of newsrooms as well. And that's why I decided to take up this mission to come to America and to allow Americans to understand and to let them know that there are indeed millions of people right around the world, spread across every corner and every quarter of the globe, that truly appreciate and love everything that America stands for and everything that America does. Freedom requires great vigilance. Freedom is not something that we can simply just accept and expect to last without making great effort great consistent effort to ensure that it remains alive. And right now, I know that America is dispirited to some degree. I know that your famous optimism is on the way. And perhaps as I speak here to you this morning, this is America's most challenging time yet. America may well be falling behind, ladies and gentlemen, but America is not falling behind any other country. It's falling behind its own potential. And lots of people say to me, they say, Mr. Adams, why does it matter to an outsider? Why does it matter to a foreigner, a non-American? What happens to America or what happens in America? The answer, my friends, is very simple. What is good for America is good for the world. A strong America is a strong world. 
A weak America is a weak world. And that's why it is just so critical that we keep this nation strong. Because that shining light that you have been to people everywhere, that can only happen if the lamp is shining at home first. And so it's incumbent on all of you, and it's incumbent, I believe, on Friends of America, one of which I consider myself to be, to come here and to urge you to exercise fidelity to the founding principles, to those flames of the American fireplace. Freedom, liberty, justice, democracy, bravery. Now is the time to remember who you are and where you come from. What you've achieved and what you can still achieve. Sometimes it takes someone on the outside to remind you or or tell you what you're like on the inside. And I hope I can offer somewhat of a unique perspective here to you this morning. I know this is pretty hard hitting stuff for uh, 7.30 in the morning, but it's very important, uh, my friends, it's very important that you remain strong and that you remember what makes this nation great. What makes this nation great is its religious and moral character. Alexis de Tocqueville, the famous French philosopher who visited here in the 18th century, said America is great because America is good. America will cease to be great if she ceases to be good. And that's something that you need, those are words that you need to carry with you every day in your pockets, in your minds and in your hearts. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to take questions. If that's the protocol, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just curious, from not being a citizen of the United States, but of Australia, what does freedom mean to you? Freedom. When you say, uh, uh, talk about America and freedom, what, what, are, what are you saying? No one does freedom to me like the United States of America. The Western world, technically, has freedom. But when you go even to the English-speaking nations, England, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the same freedom that the men and women of America enjoy are simply not present. Technically, we have freedom of speech, and you may well be free to say what you want to say, but you're certainly not free of the consequences that are associated with that. In those societies, in those collectivist societies, what happens is you speak your mind and suddenly you're ostracized. Suddenly, you can't get access to clubs or audiences or things like that. You're blackballed or blacklisted. That's the way that things operate, even in these democratic, technically free countries. Freedom to me means individual liberty. I believe people are free to pursue their dream. And what I love about America, the thing I love most about America, is that you subscribe to this marvelous idea that anyone, can rise above the circumstances of their birth and achieve whatever it is that they want to achieve. And I believe fundamentally freedom is just about that. It's allowing an individual to pursue that American dream, as is written and offered in your famous Declaration of Independence. The right to pursue happiness. Any more questions? That's it at all. That's it. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, that's, that's one of the most impressive speeches I've ever heard here at the Case Mob. It is our first international guest. So, individual freedom and liberty. I mean, did anyone get chill bumps inside of me listening to that, that presentation? I don't, I don't think he needs to go speak at the Citadel. Yeah. I think he needs to go speak at the White House. <laughs> the White House. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that basically. Well, let's hang on. Let's, let's, uh, for, those, for, those who, for those of you who are, who are speaking while the, while the speakers speak, I want to say that you need to listen to this, Mr. Burbage. For, you know, he was talking about the freedom that this country is based upon, individual freedom and liberty. Uh, about this concept of libertarianism, about pursuing your dreams. And this is something all of us who are running for office should be espousing. It's time to listen. It's time to speak, to have words and actions match. 
It's not time to, to shrink and hide from your responsibility. It's time to listen to these words and take action on these words. It's time to stand up and take action. It's not time to go and hide. It's time to take action. Stand at your state house like Wes Howard and all these other people are doing, like Kara's doing. Run for office, try to make a difference. It's time to do that. We've had a record number of people file for office in Lexington County, and it's great. Nothing against any incumbent. <coughs> Everyone should have the opportunity. Everyone can work hard, take risk in their lives, rise to the level of their potential, and should be rewarded, not blackball in other countries like he's talking about. Nick is absolutely right. Let's make this country the freest country in the world. Nick, thank you. Let's give him another round of applause.